On this video, you'll learn how we diagnose rheumatoid arthritis. Hello, my name is Siddharth Dambar, the physician at Chicago Arthritis and Regenerative Medicine, where we specialize in the treatment of arthritis, tendinitis, injuries, and back pain. On today's video, I'm talking about how we diagnose rheumatoid arthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is a potentially extremely aggressive and destructive type of inflammatory arthritis. What that means is that your immune system becomes overly active, starts to recognize your own joints and tendons as foreign, and starts to cause significant and severe inflammation that can lead to pain and swelling in the joints, significant restriction in abilities and function, and eventually even damage in the joints, which can become permanent. As such, it's incredibly important to get diagnosed early, figure out a plan of action, treat it early, and prevent this from progressing, and actually put the condition into a state where it is so well controlled that your pain, inflammation, and function come close to back to normal. So as a physician who sees quite a few patients with rheumatoid arthritis, there are a few key things that are involved to make this diagnosis. First and foremost, do you have the classic symptoms? The classic symptoms are someone who has significant swelling and pain in the joints. In particular, the joints that affect the hands and the feet on the right and the left side of the body and pain that is been ongoing for over six weeks. Now there are a couple key caveats to this. Number one, at an early diagnosis, you may not have significant pain on both sides of the body and you may not have more than one joint involved. That's okay. Uh, if you have significant swelling and inflammation in the joint and a history of symptoms that have been ongoing for more than six weeks, that's generally a pretty good history to indicate that you may have rheumatoid arthritis. Another key Historical symptom can also include pain that is classically worse with rest and better with activity. So generally speaking, rheumatoid arthritis patients have significantly worse pain first thing in the morning and significant and severe morning stiffness that can last for more than an hour and sometimes even throughout the whole day. That's different than let's say wear and tear or osteoarthritis which is more classically pain that is worse with activity and better with rest. In rheumatoid arthritis, it's very definitively worse with rest and generally better with light activity. The next key part of making a diagnosis is do you have classic examination findings? So what I would expect to find in an examination would be someone who has evidence on exam of swelling in the joints, tenderness in the joints, and overall signs of inflammation in the joints. That can include not only swelling, but also redness, warmth, and other similar findings that indicate inflammation. Other findings on examination that are really relevant would be if you have difficulty making a full grip with your hands. In addition, if you have swelling in other joints, larger joints like the elbow or knee, not only will they appear swollen, but you'd have difficulty actually fully flexing and extending your joint when you're examined on examination. Laboratory tests can be helpful as well. There's some caveats to that, which I'll explain. There are a couple key antibodies that are classically elevated and abnormal in rheumatoid arthritis patients. That includes the rheumatoid factor and the anti-CCP antibody. There are a number of other types of tests that can be checked as well on the antibody level. They're not all standardized and they're not always used, but those two ones that I just mentioned, the rheumatoid factor and the CCP antibody, are very classically checked and classically positive rheumatoid arthritis patients. However, understand the following. Number one, at early diagnosis, 50% of RA patients will actually be antibody negative. In addition, long-term, 25% of RA patients will actually be antibody negative as well. So the lab tests are helpful in confirming diagnosis, but if they're negative, but you have other signs of inflammation, 
you may still have rheumatoid arthritis. Other types of labs that can also be elevated include levels of inflammation. There's a couple different ones that can be checked, including the sedimentation rate or C-reactive protein. In some people, they can be elevated. In other people, they might not be. But if they are elevated in your case, it can fluctuate and correlate with your level of disease activity. So there are some labs that are useful in rheumatoid arthritis, but it should not fully rule out the diagnosis if you have other findings of inflammation in the joints. That last point that I just mentioned of whether or not you have active inflammation or more chronic damage is incredibly important and something I cannot emphasize enough. A trained physician who's used to seeing patients with rheumatoid arthritis will be able to tell if your pain and issues are due to active rheumatoid arthritis and active inflammation versus chronic damage. It's important to be able to tell the difference because how you treat those are very different. One can involve relatively aggressive immunosuppressant medication, the other does not. Utilizing the tools that are available with a great history, understanding of what labs are relevant, and the right imaging studies and examination findings can make a big difference in terms of how you're treated, whether that's appropriately or not, and whether that's with the right targeted treatment or not, can make all the difference in how you do and how you progress and what your outcome is. So to sum up, I hope this gives some clarification about how we make a diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis, a good history, a good examination, understanding the right labs, and using the right imaging modalities. If you found this content helpful or interesting, please subscribe, give me a like, and let me know your thoughts. Have a good day and live well. Bye-bye.